Okay, hello everyone, it's Mr. Fuller again. Um, today we're going to look at the volume of a rectangular prism. Okay, so um, these are actually pretty, actually pretty useful. I have pictures in the boxes there. Um, just kind of for fun. Okay, well first of all, we have to find out what we need to know. Okay, so um, for every different kind of rectangular prism, we're going to have some kind of length, some kind of width, and some kind of height. Okay, we're going to use these for the formula for volume. So if I uh, pull this over a little bit, um, I'll give you the formula here. So the formula we're going to use is volume is equal to length times the width times the height. Um, or sometimes we write it as V is equal to L times W times H, um, just because we're kind of lazy as mathematicians and we don't want to write out words every single time. But um, let's go ahead and try an example here. So um, first example. It says, determine the volume of the rectangular prism below. Okay, um, in my classes, I set it up on a three-point system. So for every question on the test, um, this is what I'm looking for. So for the point number one, we're looking for someone who knows the formula. So we can write it, volume is equal to length times width times height. Okay, that shows us that you know what's going on. Um, Second step, what we want to do is we want to plug in our numbers. So if we uh, plug in our numbers here, I'll use the same color here. Volume is equal to our length, which is 4 centimeters, times our width, which is 6 centimeters, times our height, which is 5 centimeters. Okay, perfect. So that's our second point. One point for writing the formula, one for plugging in the numbers in the right spot. It's not a big deal if we if we mix them up on, on, on a rectangular prism because we're all timesing them, but when we get into other uh, other volumes, then it, the order is going to matter, so it's good to get in the habit of it right now. So if we find out the answer to this, 4 times 6 times 5, that is equal to 120. Um, the next thing we want to make sure is we get the units correctly. Okay, so centimeters times centimeters times centimeters is centimeters cubed, cubic centimeters. Um, and that's our answer. So we get one point for here, one point for here, and one point for here. So out of three marks if we ever write a test on this. Um, and this also keeps it pretty orderly for you. Um, okay, let's go to the next example here. Um, so another example, this one's a little bit tougher, more real life, but um, if one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter of water, how much water can fit in this fish tank? So um, milliliters and cubic centimeters are interchangeable for water, um, they're equal to the same thing, they have a one to one ratio. But let's go ahead and do this example. So again, we have our length, oops, not length at all, we have our volume is equal to length times width times height, and now we can plug in our numbers, length, 18 centimeters, times our width, which is 4 centimeters, times our height, which is 10 centimeters, perfect. So let's go ahead and we can put this into our calculator, so we have 18 times 4 times 10 is equal to 720, plugging these V's here, 720, and our units again, for this one so far, is centimeters cubed. Um, but it's asking us to do it in milliliters. But since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, all we got to do for our answer is just switch our centimeters cubes to milliliters. So 720 milliliters. And we don't need any squares or cubes or anything on there. Milliliters is already in a volume. Um, so this will be our final answer. If we want, we could switch it into liters. Um, but milliliters is okay as well. So it's kind of a small fish tank. Um, should have maybe used some bigger numbers. But uh, hopefully this helps you if you're struggling out or struggling to find the volume of a rectangular prism.